Hello, and welcome to this little channel. Thank you everyone for supporting the channel up until now. Today we will continue the story of Suzuki Satoru as Ain't Soul Gown in the New World. I feel sorry for the guests we had until now. He decided to talk about it with Pestania later, as he was getting flustered that he was wasting too much brain power on things unrelated to this meeting. Wait, that's not what I should be thinking about now. I should be deciding on the place for our drinks. The twins would think that I don't like having tea at their house if I wait any longer. That will be bad. But, troubled, Ains looked around. Ah, uh, Ains suppressed his shoulders from twitching at Aura's sudden vocalization. His mind was also forcibly cleared of excessive thoughts with this sudden scare. Is Ains Sama thinking of having the conversation somewhere else on the sixth floor? Mm, um, that's right. The weather is great so I was thinking maybe we should do it outdoors. In that case, I will make preparations. We have parasols and a table with us. These were the things Bikubiku Chikama Sama used when she had to converse with the other supreme beings. We can use them. There's a vacant house in the village. Also, I haven't shown it to Ain't Sama yet, but there's a gazebo on this floor too. I remember visiting it with everyone. Ain't suddenly remembered the time spent with his comrades talking about meaningless things. I feel like I am remembering them less and less recently. Perhaps it was because he stopped seeing his comrades' shadows in the NPC. It's either because he was slowly forgetting about his former comrades or maybe he had started seeing the NPCs increasingly as independent entities. It would be fine if it was the latter case, but it would be sad if it turned out to be the former. All of Suzuki Satoru's pleasant memories that shine even now were made with his former comrades. That's not it. These are not past memories. Ain't's Ul Gown is still here. It is still alive. Ains let out a sigh while his heart burned with emotions he could not describe. He turned his gaze towards Orl and Mary. Everyone, I wonder how they felt when those people left this place. No, they were still NPCs back then. If at that moment. Oops, he shook his head. His thoughts were going on too many tangents. He had to make sure this plan succeeded. Ains took a look around. It seemed like no one noticed anything was weird with him. They were probably thinking that he was musing on Aura's proposal. Now was a good time to put a lid on his thoughts. Well then, this floor is not bad but this is such a rare occasion, we may as well have our conversation somewhere else. Maybe it's good to have them take a look at other places under our rule. If he wanted to count on their goodwill, it would be better if it was in a place they were used to, but he just wanted to get away from here. In that case, what would be a good place? There were two options. One was E-Rantle. The other one was Nazarick's ninth floor. These elves would form a good impression if they were to see the various races coexisting in E-Rantle but he couldn't be sure that there wouldn't be any problems. If something violent were to occur, like them being attacked, he had many ways to protect the elves and it would also help earn the elves' trust. However, it would be troublesome if someone did something to give the elves a negative impression. For example, if someone were to put on an act and call the sorcerer king the source of all their hardships. As a part of the plan, maybe he could mind control some humans and have them work in tandem, but it would just make the elves suspicious. In the first place, Ains was a source of fear in Erantle. Though there were people who admired him, they were in the minority. The ratio was something like 70 to 30 unfortunately. Therefore, it would be a bad idea if he were to let them see people in fear of him. Also, there was the danger of the elves getting the wrong idea that the various races in E-Rantle were brought there as slaves. With that in mind, as I thought, it should be the ninth floor. In that case, we're on the ninth floor. Should it be Ains's room, counting it as practice for Lumiere and providing refreshments? Ains pondered. Getting drinks in the CEO's room or having drinks in a cafe. Which one will put him at ease if he was in their place? There's only one answer. There's nothing else to think about. Let's go to the ninth floor. There is the cafeteria. Let's talk while having a light lunch. Did you have your lunch yet? And no, not yet. I see. Then the timing's just right. Actually, Ains was also trying to loosen them up by having their stomachs filled. He took some time getting here so he was worried that they had already finished their lunch. Well no, they were informed beforehand of his arrival. They couldn't have had leeway to have lunch when they did not know the exact time he would reach them. Good. Then let's have our talk while having lunch. Ains turned his gaze towards the elves. How about that? The elves started panicking, trying to push each other into being the one to give an answer. The one in the middle ended up replying, more as a result of her being pressured on both sides rather than her willingly standing up as their representative. Why yes, if it's fine with Orasama and Mary Sama. It was certainly not something he could decide on without asking the twins, Ains thought, so he asked them as well. If it's no problem, I want to take them to the cafeteria. What do you think? 
I want the both of you to come as well if possible. It's okay with us. Right, Mary? Uh, and in. Ah, uh, no, I mean yes. I am fine with it just as S sister said. That's good. Well then, Ains looked at the elves. I am going to open a gate. They first returned to the sixth floor's entrance with gate. Then, Ains sent a message to Oriole to open a gate to the ninth floor. Naturally, the gate between the eighth and ninth floors worked without an issue. If that wasn't the case, then it was highly likely the Ariadne system would be triggered. There really was no need to take this roundabout way. Though he couldn't teleport everyone there at once due to the capacity limit of the Ring of Ain't's Ool gown, he could have just made the trip twice. It was Ains's cautious heart that made him go through all this trouble just to give the elves the wrong impression. The fact was that he was extremely reluctant about showing the ring's abilities to others. Cockatus subordinates, who were on guard duty, bowed their heads deeply at Ains's arrival. Thank you for your hard work. Ains gave them a simple magnanimous greeting, befitting the aura of a ruler. Following Aura and Lumiere, the three elves came out from the gate and bunched up together. They froze in their tracks the moment they saw the monsters bowing to Ains. It was not like Cockatus vassals were being hostile toward them. That was a natural reaction, just like how a normal person walking through a forest would freeze if they saw a tiger suddenly appearing out of a bush. One of the elves was slightly pushed from behind. As they froze before the gate, they were being a nuisance for Mary, who walked behind them. Even though he only pushed her lightly, it was fatal for the tense elf's sense of balance. Hey you. Letting a pitiful cry, she collapsed onto the floor. Blood drained from the other elves' faces, and though they immediately tried to get her back up, the collapsed elf had trouble standing back up. It looked like she couldn't force her legs to work. Don't be afraid. There's no one who would lay a hand on you in Nazarick. Why yes, they probably didn't doubt Ains's words, but even so, their tension wouldn't let up. The elves by her side were quickly nodding their heads, their hair flying around from how hard they were nodding. As for the elf still on the floor, it seemed like she was on the brink of tears. Ains could say with confidence that it would be problematic going forward if this continued. He had to make their hearts a bit more pliable at the very least. Let's head for someplace to take a short rest before heading to the cafeteria. Gate. Aura, pick her up. Okay. And no need for Aura-sama to do something like tea. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, let's go. Aura briskly lifted the collapsed elf, ignoring her pleats, and put her over her shoulder. Of course, as she wore work fatigues, there was no skirt to peek under. The place connected by the gate's dark hemisphere was Ains's personal room. There were three bowing maids inside with cleaning equipment at their feet. Good work everyone. I will leave soon after taking a short rest here. I don't mind if you continue with your work. The maids replied in the affirmative, and bowed again while the others came out from the gate. The elves started gawking at their surroundings with their mouths open, looking like idiots. It seemed like they found everything around them quite exotic, different from the twins' home. They also looked less tense compared to before, probably because the regular maids were far more agreeable than Cockatus's monster-like vassal. Aura, let her sit in that chair over there. After Ains pointed to Albedo's chair, Aura quickly put the elf down on it. Albedo's desk was spotless, just like her. By the way, Ains's desk was spotless too albeit in a different sense of the word. Th thank you very much. Ains tried to speak as gently as possible to the seated elf bowing her head. No need, I can understand your shock, but just as I said before, be at ease. No one in Nazarick would bring any harm to you, so I don't mind if you take it easy. Well, it's not like they would suddenly feel at peace with just those words. Ains turned his back towards the elves, went over to one of the maids, and issued an order to her quietly. We will head to the cafeteria soon. Make sure that we will not meet anyone except you maids on our way there. Do the same thing in Kafet. Iria as well, he wanted to say, but did not. No, never mind. There's no problem with the cafeteria being used as usual. Rather, it would be better if the others use it like normal. Yes, understood. I will take my leave then. Sorry for interrupting your work, but I'll be relying on you. Such words are not needed, ain't Sama. He approached her because she was the maid nearest to him, but seeing how she threw looks of victory at the other maids, it seemed she thought of it differently. Her colleagues frowned a bit at this with undeniable vexation. The maid with orders turned her back to her colleagues and walked out of the room with a spring in her step. Ains could sense the other maids concentrating their gazes on his back. No doubt their eyes were filled with anticipation for any special kind of work that could be coming their way. By the way, he couldn't perceive anything from Lumi probably because being his maid and waiting for the day was special in itself. It felt like he was sitting on needles. Ains forced himself to look away from the maids and towards the elves. He confirmed that their breaths had returned to normal. 
It seems like there are no more problems. Dot, 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 let's head out then. He didn't want to rush them as he thought it would look forceful, but he didn't want to stay here any longer. After he confirmed the elf could walk again, Ainz took the lead and left the room. The maids looking at him with chagrin could be ignored. While on the way to the cafeteria, he could sometimes hear the elves' gasps of admiration from behind him, saying amazing and beautiful. Ainz wanted to boast but he endured it and continued to walk ahead without looking behind him. They eventually reached the cafeteria without meeting any other NPCs along the way. Except for the fact that it took more time than usual because of how slow the gawking elves were. Also because Ain't slowed down when they passed through the places he took special pride in. There were no other incidents. Nazarek's cafeteria was created with a company. Or a school's cafeteria as its inspiration. So the mood was a bit different from a restaurant. This was Ainz's first visit here since the time when he visited all the establishments in Nazarek just after they first came to this world but it looked like nothing had changed much. He could faintly hear young ladies engaging in animated conversations and the sound of cutlery from inside. It was probably filled with the regular mates and others who also worked on the ninth floor. Maybe there were area guardians present as well. It was a bit late for lunch but perhaps due to the shift system, it looked lively. If they could see the maids eating their lunch peacefully, the elves should understand what kind of place this was. They might feel like outsiders but still, this atmosphere of everyday life should calm them. That was why he did not order them to clear the cafeteria. But the moment Ainz entered the room, the mood suddenly shifted. First, it turned completely silent. The happy voices from before and the lively sounds of diners completely disappeared. The mood froze over, it was completely out of place for a cafeteria. Then, everyone turned to look at Ainz, their eyes wide open and their motions at a standstill. This was the feeling of being an outsider.